God bless everybody. Welcome back to another Bible study from Sharpening Fellowship. This is Brother Shaman, and today we are going to be talking about the topic of monitoring spirits. So this is going to be, uh, I don't want to say a long teaching, but I hope that it's a very informative and anointed teaching from the Holy Spirit as we expose the kingdom of darkness and glorify Jesus Christ. So let us pray first. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and we thank you so much for your wonderful way of just saving us, Lord God. Thank you for dying on a cross for our sins, Lord, for all of humanity and just giving us hope and peace, knowing that we can be reconciled back to God through the death of Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for everything that you do. We bless your name. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we pray that your message today will be not hindered in any way, shape, or form, but let it go forth like fire, devouring and consuming all things that are not of you. And we want to bind every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray that they go back into the pit and that your word will go forth free course. Lord, I pray that you anoint my voice, anoint my tongue and give me the information that you want me to speak. And I pray, Lord God, that you help me to hold back anything that is not of you. Help me to just not speak it at all. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if that word is not of you, God. And I want to pray for the listeners and the viewers that they receive the word and that you will heal them and deliver them through all of their afflictions through your very breath, which is the word of God that you've breathed upon in Jesus name. Amen. All right, let's dive into it, guys. So God bless. So the topic of today's message, you might be being watched. In fact, you are being watched. And we're going to elaborate on what I mean here. So turn with me to Mark chapter four, and we're going to start with verses three through eight. All right, let's read. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up, and some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. So basically what we just read is a parable of Jesus Christ, and it's speaking of the seed and the sower. It's speaking of a preacher proclaiming the word of God in hopes to save souls. It gives the three different types of soils that the word of God lands on. Now, that's not necessarily our focus. Our focus is verse four, where he says, and it came to pass as he sowed, as the preacher preached, as Jesus preached, some fell by the wayside and the fowls, that means birds of the air came and devoured it up. So let's see what Jesus means. Let's read verses 14 through 15, but keep your mind on that particular verse. All right. Verse 14, the sower sows the word. So we know that the sower that's going out is a preacher, as I've said, and they are preaching what? The scriptures. Verse 14, the gospel they're preaching. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. All right. So we see that verse 4 and verse 15 Satan is being compared to a bird that watches. I'm going to repeat that. Verse 4 and 15. Satan is being compared to a bird that watches. Now, what is this bird watching? Let me just give a quick testimony. My mom, she has a birdhouse. And in this birdhouse, if the food runs out, there's absolutely no birds in sight whatsoever. But once we go out and we restock, reload that birdhouse with the seeds, and then we walk back inside of the house, birds from every direction will just come out of nowhere. Birds we've never seen before, birds that we've never heard, they don't chirp. They just come from all directions and they eat out of that birdhouse. Now, Jesus says that Satan is the same exact way when the word of God is being preached. He says here in verse 15, 
But when they have heard, as soon as they hear the gospel, Satan comes immediately. When? Immediately. And takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And this is to a particular group of people. Now, if Satan is watching the gospel being preached and is waiting for a moment for him to take that seed out of the person who received, then that means that there is a high possibility that he's watching us as well. And we're going to go deep into this. We're going to speak more clearly about this topic because it's not necessarily preached in the American church. And I believe that that is causing a disservice to the disciples in the body of Christ. So number one, you don't need to physically see, you don't need to hear, you don't need to feel the devil around you. You don't need to feel a demonic spirit around you. You don't need to have your spiritual antennas up and alerting things in order for Satan or a demonic spirit to be in your midst. We just read that he comes out of nowhere as a bird. You don't know where all the birds are all the time. If you drop a piece of bread in the streets, in about two minutes, a bird out of nowhere would just come phew, flying down. But you didn't see that bird before. And it's because Satan, he appears as an angel of light. He's a master of deception. He's a master at masquerading himself and camouflaging himself so that he can blend in with your surroundings and with the routines that you have. But this is why we have to have the mind of Christ. We have to be able to stay on guard. Now, listen to this. I call this a monitoring spirit because many people, they will say a monitoring spirit isn't in the Bible. Well, they are, but that term monitoring isn't. So the reason that we say monitoring spirit, because it's a spirit that monitors. Monitoring is basically when an, an instrument or a device is being used and it observes it watches and it collects information on a continuous basis. So we know that these demonic spirits, they have a tendency to watch the man of God, watch the woman of God, and they keep track of their behaviors and they look for ways to get into their lives so that they can still kill and destroy. Now, as I speak on that, these spirits, they also prompt you to paranoia. They prompt you to fear. They, they discourage you from being courageous as God has called you to be. And they want you to be one that's fearful. Why would they want you to be fearful? Because as we read in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, it says that the fearful won't inherit the kingdom of God. And even in Ephesians, it says that those who are fearful, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. So he wants to make you fearful and frightened and to live in a state of panic so that you can't live in a state of faith towards Jesus Christ. All right? Now, as I keep going, this is what I want to say. I want to take my time with this so that people can really understand. Obviously, we've just read that monitoring spirits, they want to stop the preaching of the gospel. They want to make sure people don't get saved. They want to make sure that they hinder the man and woman of God from preaching and also the person that's receiving the truth. They want to block it. Now, they have another objective in mind as well. John 10, 10, what does it say? monitoring spirits, devils, Satan, they want to steal, kill, and destroy. They want to steal the word of God out of your heart. And this is for believers as well. There are many believers that can read the Bible all night and then afterwards they forget what they've read. They can't reflect on it. They can't teach it. They can't apply it to their lives. It's because there is a possibility that Satan stole that out of your heart. There's a possibility he stole it out of your mind. And also he comes to destroy. He comes to destroy your destiny in Christ. Many Christians, they are saved and they will go to heaven. But on earth, their destinies have been thwarted. Their destinies have been capsized. The plans that God has had for them, the plans that God made for them before the foundations of the earth, Satan has destroyed it through condemnation, through doubt, through fear, through isolation, through sexual immorality. Satan does this. He destroys. And a reason that I'm saying that he destroys is because God calls us to build our house upon his foundation. Remember, Jesus said the disciple that listens to his words and they do what he tells them to do, they are as one that builds upon the rock. And when the rain descends upon it, when the floods come in, and when the weather beats upon that house, it still stands. 
Satan wants to destroy your foundation so that you're not able to stand through the attacks of not only him, but also through human trial and error in life. All right. Now, he also comes to kill Satan. This is the truth. Satan wants to kill you. He wants to kill you, your family, all that concerns you. And he wants you all to perish in hell. That's his destiny for your life. Satan is an opposer to God. Remember that word antichrist. It is the opposite of Christ. Christ wants everyone to be saved. Satan wants everyone to be condemned. It's very simple. And we have to put these practices into play. All right. Now, I'm also going to elaborate on this. Another reason that monitoring spirits attack. Another reason that they watch. Another reason that they stalk is because they are looking for a legal right to get into your life to do what I just said, steal, kill, and destroy. They're looking for an entry point in your walk with God where they can distort, where they can contaminate, and where they can break your faith. We read in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, that a curse causeless, it won't come. So therefore, if you're walking with God, if you're holy as God is holy, if you're doing what he's called you to do by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no legal right that Satan has in your life to destroy and to wreak havoc in. But for those that are loose with their walk with God, for those that are just doing whatever they want and just saying, oh, I'm God's grace, God's grace. They open up so many portals in their life where monitoring spirits, they have a field day. They start to curse and to plague you with the diseases from hell. They start to slow down and delay the process that you have with the Lord. Remember, Jesus Christ, he said, don't say, oh, let me bury my father first and then I'll come follow you. He said, no, let the dead bury the dead. When people come to Jesus Christ, it's in the Bible. He says, oh, let me say bye to my mother and my father. Jesus said, no man that puts their hand forth to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Stop worrying about everything else. Stop worrying about the world. Stop worrying about how your family will feel that you follow Jesus. Stop worrying about other things and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, monitoring spirits, they will cause you to keep your mind on things that are not of the Lord's will. And they will watch you, they will pressure you, they will stalk you to a point where you feel as if you're going insane. Think about in movies. Uh, I don't really watch many movies, but when I used to and someone was being stalked in an action movie, they could feel someone following them. They start walking a little faster. They start to become more prone to make mistakes. They start to do things that they wouldn't normally do. They carelessly act out of fear. That is what monitoring spirits do. They pressure you with their looks. They pressure you with the, the presence that they have in your environment. And they want to cause you to err. Because this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that when God's word is in your heart, your steps won't slide. And even in Isaiah, he says, all that believe in him, they will not be in haste. God doesn't want you running around with your head chopped off like you're a chicken. He wants you to be walking in faith and steadfastly rooted in his love and in his grace. He doesn't want any spirit chasing after you, making you feel like you got to turn this way. That's not rest. The Bible says there is no peace to the wicked, meaning they get no rest. But as for you who are in Christ Jesus, you've received his rest and it was for your weary soul. It was for you because you were heavy laden and you were full of burdens and now he's giving you rest. You don't need to fear or run or fret at these demonic monitoring spirits. All right. Now let's go on. Now I'm moving on. I'm moving on. When we read Luke chapter four, verse 13, we see something very fascinating. And I'm actually going to turn to one in my Bible and we're going to read it together because this is very fascinating. People think that once you become, I was just talking to a brother today. They said, I'm doing all the right things. I walk with God. I'm this, I'm that. But I keep, I, I don't know how these spirits keep attacking me. Well, let me tell you something. They're not going to stop attacking no matter how holy you think you are. All right. Okay. So now Luke chapter four, verse 13. Let's read it. All right. Now this, I'm going to give you context. Jesus, as he was in the wilderness fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights towards the end of his temptation by Satan, he defeated Satan with the word of God. He punished him. And this is what Satan says after in verse 13. He says, 
When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from Jesus for a season. For a season. I, when we look that word up season in the Greek, it means, I'm going to read it. It means either a seasonable time, meaning that this isn't he left forever. It says for a season. Seasons come and seasons go. We just had spring and now we have summer. Satan left Jesus for a season. A season is the time when things are brought to a crisis according to the Greek. So when we are going, oh man, praise God. When we are going through a crisis, when we're going through a hard time, when we are going through a trial, when we're going through the testing of our faith, it is very possible that a monitoring spirit could be waiting to attack. Now, again, I'm going to read that again for those that are not understanding this, because again, this is not necessarily taught as far as I'm concerned in the American church. And this is one of the reasons why the saints are being devoured. It's because we focus too much on grace and we focus too much on the love. We have to also remember that Jesus, he armed us as soldiers in the Lord. We have to have a full scope of the entire Bible. We have to understand prophecy. We have to understand spiritual warfare, teaching, good doctrine. We have the, all of all of this. We have to be able to rightfully divide it and teach it to God's people. So this is why I'm speaking on this. This is very important. Luke chapter four, verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from Jesus for a season for an opportune time. Satan is always waiting for an opportune time to destroy you. That's why they watch. Monitoring spirits, one of the reasons that they study our behavior is because they are waiting to see what a crisis will do to us. They're waiting to see what behavior and what fruit will come to the surface as we go through a hard time. You don't believe me? Read the book of Job. Read the book of Job. The, oh, praise God. Let me stay on track though. Okay. We're going to get to that. So I want to say this, a reasonable time for monitoring spirits. It is not when you're at church and you're all dressed up and you got your button up suit on and you're around other saints and you're fellowshipping. That's not an opportune time for Satan to attack you. It's not. You're surrounded by the saints. It's full of fire. You're in unity. You're praising. You're worshiping. You really think he's going to attack you there? No. He is going to attack you when you're bored. He is going to attack you when you're sick and you're doubting that God could heal you. He is going to attack you when you're exhausted and mentally tired from eight hours of working at whatever job you're in. That is an opportune time for him to pounce on you. All right? Now, I want to say this as I move on. He and all demonic spirits, they capitalize off of careless behavior. If you are idle, if you are careless, if you are a common person, best believe that those spirits will have their way with you because you don't pose a threat. You, praise God, I'm really trying to manage my energy levels because I know that this is a long and exhaustive teaching and I want to stay on point. But listen, I want to repeat that again. Satan and all of his demonic spirits, they capitalize off of your idle behavior. And when I say idle behavior, I'm not talking about sinful. I'm not talking about you doing abominable things. I'm talking about you watching TV for six straight hours and not reading your Bible. I'm talking about you just eating a bunch of ice cream, not caring of, about your physical health, not thinking that you have to eat healthy and not offering your body as a living sacrifice. If that is idle. That's common. You going out to all of these places, oh, it's not a sin. It's common. You want to be holy as God is holy, right? And the opposite of holiness is not sin. It's commonness. 
It's when you're doing things that are prescribed as normal. But if you do too much of it, it then becomes sin. If you sit in your house all day just watching TV, you become lazy. You become a lazy and wicked servant. If you go out all day and you're eating a bunch of fast food and you're not watching your diet, you can easily become a glutton. That's what careless behavior will transition into. That's why the Bible says to redeem your time because the days are evil. You have to take thought about all that you do with the Lord. Yes, Paul said in Corinthians, all things are lawful to me. That's what you say. All things are lawful to me, but not all things are helpful for you. Not all things are beneficial for you. And you should not be brought under the power of any TV. You shouldn't be brought any, uh, you shouldn't be brought under the power of politics. You shouldn't be brought under the power of a sports team. You shouldn't be brought under the power of a video game. You shouldn't be brought under the power of a bunch of ice cream and pizza but instead be brought under the power of Jesus Christ, the most high God. All right. So let's go on. Careless behavior. As we read Ephesians chapter four, verse 26 verses through um, verses 26 through 27, it says that we are not to allow the sun to go down upon our wrath, upon our anger, because we will then give the devil a foothold. So how many of you know that the anger of a man, it doesn't produce the righteousness of God, and it's a work of the flesh. If you read Ephesians, it says that those that have fits of anger, outbursts, they live in an angry mindset, a hostile mindset. They won't inherit the kingdom of God. It's a work of the flesh, and they are clearly evident, all right? So don't let the sun go down upon your wrath, or you will give the devil a foothold, understand? So that means that you can't just live carelessly. This just is more, more proof and evidence of what I previously, previously just said. Don't live a, an idle lifestyle. Don't just hop into bed after arguing with your husband or with your wife. Reconcile things. Come back to an agreement. Have truth. Have love before you go to sleep. Don't just scroll on Instagram all night long before you go to bed. Because these are ways that you can give the devil a foothold. And you give the devil a foothold by idle and careless behavior. All right? So, we're going to move on. Monitoring spirits. They watch to see what makes you angry. We just went over how don't let the sun go down upon your wrath or else you'll be give the devil a foothold. So, therefore, he's watching. Those spirits are studying what makes you angry. This is how it works. If you... I'm making this up, by the way. If you don't like a person calling you by a certain name, say you have a nickname and it's not a big deal. This is not a sin issue. But say your name is Jimmy and you don't like being called Jim. It makes you angry. The enemy will sometimes use people to call you Jim right before you go to sleep so that you can get encouraged to think in an angry mindset and go to sleep and boom, he has a foothold. This is very important. You have to understand and stand on your guard. You have to be watchful. You have to be vigilant. Because just as Peter said, the enemy, he roams around the earth as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and destroy. Your flesh could be opening the door to demonic spirits that can watch, study your behavior, and pounce on you at the opportune time. Be careful about how you live. And how you be careful about how you live is by giving your life to Jesus Christ, trusting him with all your heart and not leaning on to your own understanding and acknowledging him in all of your ways so that he can direct your paths. This is the truth, all right? Now, let's move on. A bird. Think of a bird. We spoke earlier of the parable of the seed and the sower. Jesus Christ himself, he referred to the devil as a bird. Now, we know that birds, they have the ability to transmit messages. Think of back in the day, I don't know if they still do it, but back in the day, they would be in jails and they would have pigeons and they would put letters on the pigeons' feet and those pigeons, that would fly to the designated areas and they would carry that message to that person. That is the same way that monitoring spirits operate. And I can give you some evidence on this. First of all, Beelzebub, that's, I don't I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Beelzebub is one of the devil's names. It's one of his aliases. And what that means is the Lord of flies, the Lord of flies, right? Now we have more evidence that monitoring spirits do this. If you turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 20, it says this, 
Even in your thoughts, do not curse the king, nor in your bedroom, curse the rich. For a bird of the air will carry your voice or some winged creature will tell the matter. So we know that Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. That's Satan's name. He's a winged creature and he will tell the matter according to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 20. And also Jesus says that Satan is as a bird that looks and immediately takes the word of God out of people's hearts when it's being sown into them. The Bible says the bird of the air will carry your voice. So this is what he will do. He will eavesdrop on plans that you and God have that are supposed to be private. And he will try to carry your voice and expose your plans so that he can increase the warfare in your life to make you wary and to discourage you from continuing to go on. That's what he will do. So you have to be careful about what you share with people. You have to be careful about what you expose to people regarding the calling on your life. Sometimes it's not meant for you to blabber it out. Sometimes it's meant for you to keep it in your heart. Speaking of the heart, the Bible says here that we have to guard that good deposit that's been entrusted to us by the Holy Spirit with all of our might. And I'm going to give you the reference here. It's in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. Protect through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Don't just share anything. Don't just share all that God is giving you. If God is telling you that you're going to be a prophet to the nations and, or that you're going to start this orphanage ministry or that you don't share that with everyone right away. You want to listen to God's voice and you want to ask him, do you want me to share this or do you want me to keep this between you and I? Not everything is meant to be shared to the public. And even messages, even revelations that I've gotten from the Lord, they're not meant to be shared with the public at all times. Now, there are times where he'll have me steward a mystery that he's given me from a revelation. And then as I mature and as I just saturate in his presence, he'll release me to give the mystery that I've received a long time ago to the people for the first time. But it's about patience. That's a fruit of the spirit. You want to be patient. You don't want... What? Oh, God told me this. And you start running. No. Monitoring spirits will increase the warfare in your life if you are just a run and go guy. Just sit, meditate. The Bible says meditate upon God's word. Don't just run and tell people stuff. All right. Also, I'm going to give you another verse to confirm what I just said, because I'm in America and that's the sadly the issue in America. You have to explain everything in detail with I don't want to say it's a bad thing, but you have to explain everything to the littlest detail when it comes to spiritual warfare, because our country is so malnourished spiritually and they're so ignorant concerning spiritual things. So you have to go so deep into the scripture. You have to spend half of the message explaining and proving that this stuff is real. Whereas when you go to the Middle East or you go to the Caribbean or you go to Africa or India, they don't need all this. They just hear it and they say it's true because we deal with it. And that's the issue with America. We lack spiritual power and discernment because we're so distracted with the ways of the world. We're so distracted with all the TV shows. We're so distracted with the YouTube, the scrolling, fast food, fast Amazon, fast everything that we don't even sometimes meditate on the word of God and look at our environment. Don't you know that there's demonic spirits all over the place? And even God is all over the place. His creation is testifying, testifying of him each and every single day. We get so distracted from the word of God in America that we can't seem to discern simple spiritual things. All right, another verse for those that want to hear. Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, above all else. What? Above all else, above everything else. Guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So guard and protect what God puts in your heart. How do you do this? We just read in 2 Timothy 1.4. It's by the Holy Spirit. You ask the Holy Spirit to help you to protect and guard what he has planted and deposited inside of you. That's what you do. All right. Now we're going to move on to this. This is one of my favorite parts. So. Now we are going to talk about how do these spirits operate. Ready? Now, this is the part where a lot of people, they manifest. And it's good. It's, it's funny sometimes. But monitoring spirits, they operate through three things that I've written down. Written down. Number one is animals. Animals. A spirit can be inside of an animal watching you. 
It's true. Just going to take a moment of silence to see some comments because I know that this sounds very foreign to most. But yes, monitoring spirits, they can possess animals to watch your every move and to study and observe your behavior. Now, I'm going to give you proof to this. When we go to Luke chapter 8, verse 31, let's read. Praise God. I know my wife is cracking up. She loves when I preach like this. All right. So Luke chapter 8, verse 31, it says here. I'm going to read 30. And Jesus asked him, saying, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into him. And he suffered them, meaning he allowed. Right. Verse 33. And then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, the pigs. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. They perished in the waters. Right. So demonic spirits, evil spirits, they can enter into animals and they can watch and study the man of God through the animals. And also they can showcase their behavior through it. So pigs, we know pigs that are gentle. I'm not talking about the war hog, the ones that run fast and knock things over. I'm talking about the typical pink pig, right? It's very gentle, keeps his head down and eats the garbage, so on. But it says here that these Swine, after the demons entered into them, they ran violently down at a steep place into the lake and were choked. So how many of you know that animals sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes animals, they get possessed by spirits and start to act violently. And I can prove it. There were times where I would be just walking in a neighborhood and dogs would just lose their mind, go crazy, absolutely ballistic. And this is the thing. In America, we laugh at that stuff and we think that it's normal. Oh, that's just the dog's behavior. Sometimes it may be the dog's behavior, but there are other times where there's a spirit inside that dog causing it to act violently. And this traces back to Genesis where God says that he's given us dominion over everything on earth. The cattle in the field, we have dominion over dogs. We tell them what to do. All other animals as well. Even if they have spirits, we still tell them what to do. We have dominion over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air. And this is where we have to realize our identity in Christ. Because Jesus even confirmed it. And he said that he's given us power over all the power of the enemy. We are able to uh, stomp upon serpents and scorpions and not be hurt by any. But listen, I remember, and this is a true story. I was in the woods with my wife. This is before we got married. And as I was in the woods, I actually, let me, let me save that testimony. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to share it. Let's stay on the animal topic. Ah, praise God. All right. So I was in the woods with my wife before we got married and we were just walking around and we weren't kissing. We weren't hugging. We weren't doing any of that. I didn't do any of that stuff. And the Lord told me that there's a monitoring spirit inside of the woods prompting me to act sexually immoral with my wife so my soon-to-be wife so that it could have a legal right to destroy me so i'm listening to this voice and i obviously don't tell my wife that because i don't want her to think i'm crazy i look into the air i look into the trees there's an owl broad daylight there's an owl staring at the depths of my soul and for those that don't know in the book of leviticus an owl is an unclean animal so that was how god confirmed to me that that was a monitoring spirit and i said whoa and I say, God, there's no way you're really showing me this. My wife and I, we keep walking. And next thing you know, we come to a tree that has an altar of witchcraft at the bottom, full of crystals and all kinds of stuff on the tree. And God was letting me know, emphasizing the point that there are monitoring spirits in the woods. So now watch this. This is back to the point. Remember, the swine, they ran violently down steep pace into the lake and they were choked. Right? Right? After Legion came into them. So as I'm walking, God says to me as clear as day, I could hear his voice. He said to me, there is a dog that is about to come and try to attack you, but take dominion over it because I've given you power. A woman is walking her dog in the woods without a leash, which is, I don't know why she was doing that. It comes running at me and my wife full speed. 
My wife gets behind me and I said, stand back in Jesus name. The dog stopped in his tracks and God let me know that this scripture is true. Some animals can be possessed by demonic spirits. They can be. And they watch your behavior. I was being watched by an owl. And I was being watched so intensely by that owl that I couldn't even, I looked up and its eyes were directly on me. It wasn't an animal. It was a spirit inside of the animal trying to prompt me to do something that I wasn't supposed to do with my soon-to-be wife. All right. Now, let's keep going on. I also have a testimony of, I was in a children's ministry in Willingboro, New Jersey. And I was ministering to young men, not young men, young boys and young girls. And I was praying for them. The spirit broke out. They were interpreting dreams and speaking into all kinds of things. And I remember this little boy from Africa. He said, Brother Shaman, there's a, a demon inside of the fly. And I said, what? And he said, that fly just landed on a fence and is listening to everything that you're saying. So in my mind, I said, how does this little kid know about that stuff? Because I was taught about it, but I said, how does he? Turns out he's from Nigeria where that's normal. That's typical. That stuff happens every single day. So I taught him how to pray against it. And I said, come with me. Look, this is how you pray against it. I said, I blind the eyes and I deafen the ears of every monitoring spirit. The fly ran violently like this or flew violently like that. And the air fell down and it died. He can testify if he's in here right now. But this is the truth. Spirits can get... Spirits can get access into animals. Why do you think one of the devil's names is the Lord of the flies? He operates through flies too. Why do you think Jesus referred to him as a bird? He operates through birds. Why do you think he's referred to as the serpent? He can operate through a snake. Remember Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 where the Bible says that the snake was more subtle than any beast that God had created and that serpent spoke? Sometimes an animal can speak to you as it's being influenced and overpowered by a demonic spirit. You ever get around? This is something that used to happen with my cat. I don't have the cat anymore, but my cat used to start meowing and it was just such a demonic meow and it was for no reason every single night at 2 in the morning. And obviously, I was a little kid. I didn't know how to pray against it. I wasn't even saved. But as I grew up, I started to notice that my cat was being used by a spirit to hinder and to quench the move that God already called upon my life. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher, but he knew. And the enemy will sometimes use traumatic experiences to fear, to get us to fear and to scare us from walking in our calling. This is true. My cat used to stare at the corners of my room and would just meow me at two o'clock in the morning. And I knew it was a spirit in there. I would get so scared that I would put on some Christian talk show on the TV. This is real. This is real. All right. So I'm going to keep going on. I'm sharing testimonies right now. This is how people relate. I remember in the summer of 2021, I had this assignment from the Lord to pray every morning around two to three o'clock in the morning. Right. Every morning, faithfully. So I would get on my knees and I would start praying. Every time that I would open up my mouth and start praying, a dog outside randomly would just start barking aggressively. <laughs> just aggressively. And I would say, no, that's a coincidence. Because remember, I'm from America. I don't have that. I'm not used to that kind of stuff. So I would stop and I would say, no, that's a coincidence. And as I would stop praying, the dog would stop barking. And then I would test it. I would say, in Jesus. And it would go, like, and I would stop. And I would say, and, the, and, it would, rah, 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 and it would keep going. And God, I would speak to him and say, God, why is this happening? He would say, that dog is trying to scare you from praying. And it's also trying to get you to get intimidated because now you know he's listening to you. The enemy is listening to you through a dog. So this is one of his schemes and one of his plots to get you to stop praying. I don't want to pray. Satan is listening to me. No, you pray against it. Just as I spoke against that fly, I blind the ears. I mean, I blind the eyes. I deafen the ears of every monitoring spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Learn how to pray. All right. So that was one of that was the it. That's it for the animals and how monitoring spirits operate through them. OK, number two, they come through dreams. We read in Matthew chapter 13, verse 25, that the devil, he will come to sow tares among the wheat as you sleep and he will go his way. So these tares, they could be in a dream sometimes. And I know everyone can relate to this. Sometimes in a dream, you will have people watching you, just staring at you like this or stalking you. 
following you around the town. I've had so many dreams like that. That is a strong indication that you are being watched by an evil spirit. Because they can manifest themselves in dreams. They can study your behavior. They can let you know that they're watching you to pressure you into moving and acting carelessly. I There's people that would come to me and say, hey, I had a dream that there were a bunch of wolves sitting in the house. And this happened to me too. I had a dream too that there were a bunch of wolves just watching me preach. And as I was in a dream, I would... Talk to God and say, why are there wolves watching me preach? What, why are they looking at me so focused? And why are they just gazing into my spirit? They just won't stop looking at me. And God was telling me that those wolves represent false teachers and prophets. And they want to entice me to be as they are. So it's watching and listening to my messages to see if I slip or see if I get in my flesh. So that spirit can come in and cause me to false prophesy and false teach. Remember, the Bible says symbolically that wolves are symbolic to false teachers. And God gave me that interpretation. And it's the same thing with some of you guys. I also had uh, another dream, and I'm not trying to share my own testimony as if they are above Scripture or even equal to Scripture. But I'm sharing it because this is something that the people need to know. If I don't say it, then who will? That's how I think about it. But I also had a dream that there was a leopard. And I was in the city. I was just walking around, minding my business. And there was a leopard, like, hiding on the cars and hiding behind trash cans, jumping on top of buildings, just following me. So skillfully. And as I woke up, God was saying that that is how the enemy is studying my life. He sees that I'm on fire for God. He sees that I'm reading the scriptures. He sees that I'm fellowshipping. He sees that I'm putting God first in all things. So he is looking with all of his effort, with all of his intention, with all of his power to find fault so that he can contaminate and corrupt and destroy what God has blessed me with. That is what sometimes they would do, okay? Now, watch this. Also, you can be getting followed in a dream by a monitoring spirit. They do this to harass you. How many of you know when you constantly are getting followed by somebody, you have a tendency to stop and say, stop bothering me. You act in your flesh. You get mad. Think about a car driving behind you in traffic. They're right on your tail. You sometimes can get prompt to anger and want to get out and say, yo, stop following me. Or sometimes you want to curse. The spirit of of Satan, he will do that. He will harass you and ride your tail, literally be on top of you, breathing on your neck, saying, fall, 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 fall. And you will get so tired of it that you may act out in your flesh and some people even end up killing themselves. This is very important. People, saints, I know people, some of them will end up killing themselves because they can't take the pressure of a monitoring spirit. They can't take the dreams anymore. They can't take the animals following them and staring at them. They say something is wrong. Something is off. And there's no preacher that can tell me what's wrong. There's no preacher that can tell me what I'm going through. Everyone thinks I'm crazy because this cat keeps following me around or this dog keeps barking violently every time I step foot in the house or this owl is is following my car. How many of you guys know that people have real testimonies like this and they end up killing themselves because they don't think they're saved. They think they're going through some kind of supernatural experience where no one has the answers to. But you have to understand that these people are crying out for help. When I was having all these demonic dreams, when I was having all of these attacks in my life, no pastor knew what to do. Just pray, bro. That's that's not it. Just pray. No, you have to give me tools and you have to give me um, plans to devour and just destroy the enemy from my life. I don't want to live in bondage. I don't want to be harassed every day. I don't want to be tired. God gave me this. Sometimes in a dream, there are some of you that these monitoring spirits, they will follow you to a point in your dream where you become exhausted. You try running away from that lion in your dream. You try uh, driving all over the place to avoid this mysterious man following you around in a van in your dream. And then you wake up tired. You wake up exhausted, meaning that it's a lot harder or more difficult for you to fulfill the assignment that God has placed on your life. The enemy will attack you through dreams and weary you. He will get you tired by the pressure. He will get you tired by the watching that he does. How many of you know that the enemy won't give in? He's angry, Revelation says. He's angry. He's full of anger. He's full of wrath. And he wants you to join him in hell so he won't stop. He is relentless. He's relentless. All right. So let's keep going on. 
I wanted to also speak on the serpent. I, I was going over how sometimes the evil spirits, they can possess an animal. And we know that when animals, typically when they hunt, they're not looking at you because they admire you. They're not staring at you and licking their tongue and licking their face because they think your outfit is nice. They're thinking of a way to kill you. They're thinking of a way to eat you. They're thinking of a way to destroy you. So just as the serpent in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, just as he was talking to Eve, distorting the word of God, snakes, especially Satan, he bites with poison. That poison can get injected into you and you can begin to be defiled. So we have to be very mindful of this. Now, for those that really walk with God, those that are holding on to the hem of his garment, that doesn't stop you from being attacked. We just read how Satan said he left Jesus for an opportune time. He left him for a season. Sometimes he will leave you for a season and he will come right back. But as he has that poison, and even if he does bite you when you're walking with the Lord, it won't harm you. Remember in Acts chapter 28, let's read it, man. Let's go through the scriptures. This is something that we need to go as a church, as a body of Christ. Read the Bible. Stop telling me all this you know, self-help stuff. Let's read the Bible and let's see if what you're saying is actually true. All right. So Acts chapter 28, and this is going to be verse three. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. A snake bit him on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers him not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and he felt no harm. That's exactly how it ought to be with us. When Satan bites us, when that serpent, that monitoring spirit bites us with poison, we have to be able to shake it off into the fire of God. The fire of God is going to be your devotion. It's going to be your private life. How much are you spending time with God? Are you reading the scriptures? Are you applying the scriptures? Are you praying? Are you fasting? Shake off the beast. Shake off the monitoring spirit into the fire of God and let him be burnt to ashes in Jesus' name, all right? Now, let's move on. Number three, we went over the previous two points of how monitoring spirits operate. They, number one, operate through animals. Number two, they operate through dreams. And number three, they operate through people. Now, this is the part that I believe that a lot of people are going to be able to identify with. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter six, and we're gonna go to verse 11, all right? Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, although monitoring spirits can use people, it does not mean that that person is to blame. You don't war against a person. You war against the spirit that is operating within and around that person, all right? Now, people... When they get used by a monitoring spirit, they will start to ask you questions, personal questions all the time. Hey, how's your family? Um, what's your mom's name? Or, um, you know, how much do you read the Bible? Oh, where do you work at? Pers and you don't even know them like that. They start asking you these deep questions that they have no business knowing the information of. That is sometimes how a monitoring spirit will act. Now, even me, I still deal with these kind of people at my job. They will ask me, hey, um, what kind of degree do you have? Or what kind of, and it's not wrong to necessarily ask those questions in a sense, but you have to know the heart of a person. If a person you know is conniving, if you know that they're evil, if you know that they're backstabbers, if you know that they don't even believe in God, best believe that they are asking you your information so they can take that back. The spirit inside of them can take their information back and bring it to the kingdom of darkness so they can come up with a better ways to tempt you, better ways to distract you, better ways to hinder you. Now, listen, when I first got saved, I used to deal a lot with sexual immorality. Now, I'm not going to say I'm above any temptation because that itself is deception, but I don't wrestle with that as much anymore. I, I, I don't really have those experiences as I don't have them. But when I first got saved, I used to always fall to sexual immorality. The enemy, he's been studying me for the past four years. He knows that that's not going to get me anymore. So now what does he do? He starts to 
oh, read, he likes to read the scripture. Okay, let's get him puffed up with pride because the Bible says that knowledge it puffs up. So as I'm reading the word, the enemy will sometimes tempt me to think that I know more than pastors that have been serving for 50 years. He will tempt me and try to make me rule over people that just got saved. And every time I feel that temptation, I humble myself. And I quote John chapter three, verse 30, where John the Baptist, he says, you must increase, I must decrease. You get low, you humble yourself, all right? So the enemy, he uses people to collect information from you and to report back to his demonic headquarters so that he can come up with better strategies, better plots, better plans to deter you from following God. That's what he would do. That's why the Bible says, don't be ignorant to Satan's devices lest you be taken advantage of. If you are ignorant to what the enemy is doing, then you will be taken advantage of. You will be destroyed. That's why when people say, stop talking about spiritual warfare, stop talking about the demonic side. God has called me to do it because we're an army. And the Bible says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, it says that all ministries, though they may be different, they're still of the same Lord. So don't get mad that I'm exposing the plans of the enemy. It's biblical. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, it says that we have to have no unfruitful or we have to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. That's what I'm doing. I expose. God has given me that mantle. He's given me that excitement to expose the enemy in everyone's life. To expose the enemy in my life. He has given me the assignment to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of Satan. And to glorify Jesus in the same manner of conversation. Alright? So, um, I'm, I'm closing out soon. But this is another reason that the monitoring spirits, they will use people to ask you private information to destroy you. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. You're about to read this. Let's read it. Ready? Matthew chapter 6, verses 3. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand does. doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, yeah, um, let me stop there. Let me stop there. Okay, so there are certain things in our life that God wants to be kept secret. He wants us to keep a portion of our prayer life in private. He wants us to keep a portion of our study life in private. Now, if a monitoring spirit is operating through a person asking us what we are doing in private with the Lord or what we're doing out of the sight of men, that could strip us of the reward that God will give. Because we'll expose it. We'll, we won't be vigilant. We won't be careful. We'll just speak and say, oh, well, you know, on my private time, this is what I do. Oh, yeah. You know, right now what's going on in my family, this is what I'm doing. You lose your reward because God told you what you do in secret. If it stays in secret, he will reward you openly. So if a monitoring spirit is operating through a person trying to get you to express what you do behind closed doors, that means that the enemy is stealing your blessing through what you say with your mouth. You have to be very careful with this. You have to be very careful, okay? All right, now I'm going to give more confirmation on this. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12. As Nehemiah was going back to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, this is what he said. And I arose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, except the beast that I rode upon. So Nehemiah, he's saying that he was only able to take trusted men of God with him to go and inspect the walls of Jerusalem before he built it. And he says, what? Neither I told any man. Neither I told any man what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. And you want to know what else he was? Since we're talking about animals, he said, neither was there any beast with me. He didn't even bring animals with him. 
He didn't bring animals with him. He didn't tell anybody else what God put inside of his heart, except for the trusted men that were supposed to be walking with him. And you want to know what the result of that was? He built the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. Now, if he opened his mouth and he said, hey, guys, God, Israelites, God told me that I want to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Bring all your animals. Everyone come with me. The process would have been thwarted immediately. Because remember, what God tells you to do in secret, if you expose that in public, you lose your reward. He would have lost his reward of building the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. Now, turn with me here. I'm not done. Turn with me here. This is very good information that the Holy Spirit has given all of us. All right. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. These are the monitoring spirits that I'm speaking of that operate through people. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was mad. And he took great indignation and he began to mock the Jews. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews do? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they receive or will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Monitoring spirits will try to discourage you. They will tell you that what God has called you to do, you're not able to accomplish. And they will try to use every single plot, every single uh, piece of information to convince you that God is not speaking to you and that God is not with you. But this is how we ought to react. Verse three, this is another monitoring spirit. And then after that, Nehemiah is going to rebuke these monitoring spirits and he's going to continue the work of God. All right. Now, Tobiah, the Ammonite was by him and he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. So Tobiah is saying, even if they try to build this wall of Jerusalem, I, I, I pray for foxes to go up that stone wall and to break down everything. He spoke a word curse. But this is what Nehemiah says. When the enemy, the monitoring spirits, they speak curses over your life through people and dreams or even through animals. This is how you ought to react, just as Nehemiah did. He goes to God. Hear, O God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head. And give them for a prey in the land of captivity. So Nehemiah used all of their words and he casted it back to them. So that's why we pray that way. When I say I blind the eyes and deafen the ears of every monitoring spirit. It's because everything they want to happen to me, I speak total destruction back to them. And my word has more power because the Holy Spirit lives within me. So therefore, all power of God will triumph over all power of Satan and they will be left in dismay. They will be left in ashes of rubble. They will be consumed by fire. In Jesus' name. All right. So now we're going to talk about how to dismantle monitoring spirits. We're moving on. We're talking about how to break their hold from off of our lives. All right. John chapter 14, verse 30. I'm going to read part of it in the Amplified Version. Jesus is speaking. He says, for the ruler of the world, Satan, is coming. And he has no claim on me, no claim on me. That means no power over me, nor anything that he can use against me. That's what your testimony ought to be. And for your testimony to be that Satan has no power over you and that he can use nothing against you is if you are connected to the life source, which is Jesus Christ, connected to him through fellowship, connected to him through reading the word, connected to him through prayer, connected to him through fasting and worship. You have to be connected to Jesus Christ in order for you to say, although monitoring spirits are watching me and they're coming for me to destroy, they have no power over me. They have nothing they can use against me because I stand with the almighty God, Jesus Christ. All right. Now you have to be living a holy life. Just as God is holy, you have to be holy in order to effectively wage war against monitoring and watching demons. All right. You can't sit at the table of evil spirits and then try to sit at the table of God. You have to choose this day who you want to serve. Reject the things that come from the evil side of the world. Reject and abstain from all appearance of evil and then hold on to what's good, which is the Father. And once you complete that step by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have to pick up your Bible because this is your word. And I'm going to speak to you on how to keep it sharp because there are most Christians, a lot of Christians, they have dull swords. They have the, the Bible, they know the scriptures, but they 
they don't use it effectively and their sword doesn't hurt anyone. In order for your sword to become sharp with the Lord, you have to be able to have the Bible as your daily bread. Eat it, read it every single day and apply it to your life by God's grace. This is how you sharpen up your sword. It's with the help of the Holy Ghost. You read your Bible and you do what the Bible says. That's how it becomes sharp. That's how you become effective in the spirit realm. And that is because uh, that is how you get stronger spiritually. Okay. Now, number three, I've been reciting this and I'm going to keep reciting it. Um, number one, it was you have to be holy as God is holy. Repent of your sins. Believe in the gospel. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Number two, pick up your Bible. Read it every single day. Do what it says by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then number three, begin to proclaim. Begin to speak the word of God. Begin to blind the eyes and deafen the ears of all monitoring spirits through the proclamation of scripture. In Genesis chapter 19, verse 11, remember how we read when the men of Sodom and Gomorrah, they tried to come into Lot's home to rape the angels. The angels came by the door and they smoked them with blindness. And as they smoked smoked them with blindness, the Bible says that they wearied themselves trying to find the door. So as we blind the eyes of all monitoring spirits, they become tired and weary trying to distract us and trying to pull us down. And then what? They come back at an opportune time. But you want to keep them weary. You want to keep them hurt. You want to keep them in a place of exhaustion. You want to keep blinding them in the name of Jesus. All right. So that's Genesis chapter 19 verse 11. Now also God's word is a consuming fire. The Bible, when you speak this, because listen, remember in Ecclesiastes, it says that monitoring spirits, they listen to your conversations. They watch and listen to how you behave. They, they watch your speak. They watch and listen to everything. Okay, so God's word is a consuming fire. We want to speak his word into the ears of monitoring spirits. So if you feel as if there's another presence in your room, that's not God. If you feel as if there is something demonic inside of that animal that's trying to attack you, you want to speak the word of God, because it's a consuming fire that burns and it devours. And Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 13, read this, believe this, and live this. It says here, God is speaking to Jeremiah. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth as a fire and the people that you speak to will be wood and it will get devoured and consumed by that fire. So you want to be able to speak God's word against any demonic spirit in your atmosphere. If you feel as if there is something uneasy about your environment, you begin to speak the word of God. You begin to say, I take authority over every demonic spirit inside of this place and I command you to go back to the pit. I declare and decree that if God can be for me, then no one can be against me. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 31, you begin to quote Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment I condemn because my righteousness is of God and um, the Lord is my, my savior. You begin to speak this into the atmosphere. Now, I'm going to give you a quick testimony. What I typically do is I let the Bible play in my home, but I also pray. I speak the word of God. I speak Bible verses, scriptures all over my house. And one day before my mom was coming over, I told my wife, I said, babe, my objective is for my mom to walk in and feel the presence of God. I want her to say that this is the Lord's house. So we're praying over, we're speaking the scripture. We're not getting emotional, yelling and screaming. Okay, there's a time and a place for that. But yelling isn't going to change your atmosphere. The word of God, that's a consuming fire will. So I speak the word of God. My mom came in and she said, I feel like I'm in the holiest house ever. I, she felt the Holy Spirit. And this is what happened. Demons, they flee when you speak that word. They run. Just as we read in Acts chapter 28, when Paul was gathering sticks to make a fire, once the fire was lit, the serpent came out. And then when that serpent bit Paul, he shook it into the fire. Let your house be the fiery temple of the Holy Ghost. Let the glory of God fill your house, your, your apartment, wherever you live. Let the glory of God fill it to a point that every demon will scatter out of it, just as the serpent did when Paul built that fire. The fire of God must be in the center of your home. 
home in order for those demons to escape out and run out. They'll scatter like cockroaches. They'll slither like snakes, but you will burn them with the Holy Ghost fire. And if they try to bite you as they're frantic in and as they're disturbed, then it won't hurt you. Even Jesus Christ, he said that there is, if you get injected with any deadly poison, according to the Great Commission in Mark chapter 16, the Bible says that it will not hurt you. Just as that serpent and that venomous beast did not hurt Paul, it won't hurt you because you're a child of God. The blood of Jesus Christ is running through your veins. And this is something that we want to declare to the devil right now. We shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So that's the end of my message. I'm going to start praying. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful live. And I just want to lift you up and bless you. Thank you for a tremendous experience tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want to pray for everyone that is on a live right now, God. Everyone who is battling monitoring spirits. I blind the eyes of all evil demonic monitoring spirits that are watching their destiny, watching their growth in Christ, waiting for a legal right to enter. I blind you to a point where you now can't see the man or the woman of God. You are wearying yourself trying to find the indwelling of that wor that woman and man of God. And I deafen the ears of every monitoring spirit in the name of Jesus. Anything that you have heard of the saints that was supposed to be kept between them and God. I deafen your ears and I take that information back with the sword of the spirit in Jesus mighty name. And I come against every spirit that is attempting to hinder the growth in the man or woman of God that is watching this live right now. We bind you in Jesus name. We arrest you in the spirit and we command you to go into the pits of hell. In the name of Jesus, we say these prayers. And Lord God, I pray that your fire will come upon each and every single one of us. Let your fire burn in our hearts as Jeremiah and let us grow weary holding it in. Let us speak your word out and devour everything that is not of you. Lord God, we pray that you help us to become more Jesus focused and not demon focused, but help us to endure hardship as a good soldier in the Lord. Help us to not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Help us to be vigilant. Help us to be watchful and sober minded and help us to bruise the head of the serpent in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So I just wanted to say this really quickly. As I was praying the Lord, he revealed this to me. He said, this is a prophetic word that I'm giving now. So for those that are in the chat and they're saying in their minds or in their hearts, I'm doing all that I can with God and I don't know why I'm being attacked. God is saying to you right now that Job was a perfect and blameless man, but yet Satan still had access to his life through his permission. Permission. And the Bible says this. I'm going to take you to it right now. This is what the Lord has given me to share with you. He's saying how the enemy is always going to be on a prowl. But that means that you have to always be walking in the will of God. Just because you're doing the right things, God is, he's really proud of you. He's really proud of us for striving to be holy and looking in to his word and trying to live it out by the power of the Holy Spirit. God is absolutely pleased with us because of our faith. But he is saying that just because we do these things, we should not expect to live some life that's full of peace and smooth sailing. He said we're inside of a world that's full of chaos in which the lowercase g God Satan rules and dominates. We have to be vigilant. We have to put on our full armor of God. And this is the word he said. He said, although you go through many afflictions and many trials, he will deliver you from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I, the Lord, will deliver you from them all. And he says here, he says, he says this to Job. Job was a man that was truly after his own heart. And the Lord, he said that his wife tried to manipulate Job to turn away when he was going through a crisis. Remember how we read how that word season, when the Bible says that Satan left Jesus for a season, that means to a moment of crisis. When Job was going through a crisis, his wife said in Job chapter 2 verse 9, curse God and die. Curse God and die. But God is telling you to use his word as a fire. And he wants you to debunk any heresy. He wants you to debunk any attack on his name. Because you, he says, you were made in his image and after his own likeness. And if you deny him in front of men, if you deny him in front of your wife, your husband, your family members, your school, if you deny him in front of those that are surrounding you, then he will deny you in front of his father and the angels in heaven. 
All right. So this is one thing that um, I wrote this down. This is something that he gave me. I'm trying to find it. It's in Job, though. All right. So this is what God says pertaining to our message on monitoring spirits. All right. So this is Job chapter one. And we are going to read verse nine. So after God recommends Job to Satan, saying how pleased he is, just how he's pleased with you. He says, Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? So listen to what Satan says. This is an indication that Satan was watching Job as a monitoring spirit. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. How did he know that? God didn't say anything about there being a hedge of protection around Job. God didn't say anything about Job being blessed with the work of his hands. He didn't say anything about his substance being increased. He didn't say anything about his house and all that he has being protected on every side. Satan knew that already. So the fact that he knew that already indicates that he's been watching Job from afar, just as he's watching you. But you want to know who else is watching you? The creator of the universe. And the Bible says that he won't fail you. He won't forsake you. And that as you trust in him, he will give you power and might and strength to mount up with wings as eagles. And when you run, you won't faint. When you walk, you won't be worried. He will keep you through everything. All right. Praise God. So this is a message from our fellowship. Our fellowship is called Sharpening Fellowship. That's our ministry, Sharpening Fellowship. You can look us up on YouTube at Sharpening Fellowship. And also you can look us up on Facebook at Sharpening Fellowship. If you want to fellowship with us and you want to be serving the Lord in the midst of our ministry, you can contact me through direct messages. I have them open. We pray every single night at 8 p.m. I'm, I'm late for prayer meeting, but we pray every single night at 8 p.m. And on Thursdays and on Sundays, we have Bible studies, which is this right now. The reason that I'm not in a prayer meeting that I just spoke of is because this teaching was longer than I thought. But again, we have prayer meetings every single night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then we have Bible studies every Sunday and every Thursday, typically around 6 to 7 p.m. We are a ministry and we just pray that the Lord uses his church to turn the world upside down. And we just invite you to fellowship with us. We invite you to learn the word of God with us. We invite you to just, just walk with us, walk by faith with us. So our, on um, YouTube, we're called Sharpening Fellowship, Sharpening Fellowship. And you're going to see two swords. It's going to be white, red, and it has some black in it. But we're also on Facebook as well, Sharpening Fellowship. And you can DM me if you want to be a part of our ministry group chat. We have a group chat on Telegram. We constantly are fellowshipping each and every single day. If you want to be a part of our ministry chat, please DM me your name and I will send you the link and we will begin to fellowship together. All right, but praise God. Thank you guys. I will check my DM. I can't read all the comments. There were a couple of them. I got to get ready. I got to go pray, but praise God. Thank you guys.